On this day in 1915, the first issue of the Leader newspaper was published. This was the official newspaper of North Dakota's nonpartisan league. As Renee Cooper joins us to share, the NPL's history is little known. Hi, Renee. Hi, Lauren and Nicholas. It's true. The NPL still lives in, on in some way after it merged with the North Dakota Democratic Party, now the unique Dem NPL. But Treasury candidate Mark Haugen, whose grandfather was instrumental in the merging of the party, says most people even in his own party, think of themselves as solely Democrats. He says they don't understand the MPL. But over the span of four decades, the party shaped a lot of North Dakota policy and ideology on both sides of the aisle. The Nonpartisan League was formed by farmers and merchants. It became the largest political exception in a state otherwise controlled by the Republican Party. Farmers in North Dakota were upset with big business, railroads, banks specifically, uh, and how they were treated uh, regarding um, uh, loan rates, uh, shipping rates through the railroad. They, they were angry. They were fed up. Sarah Vogel still considers herself a leaguer. Her father, who was an early member, was a former manager of the Bank of North Dakota, the only state-owned bank in the country created by the NPL. Some of the stuff I have is like oral history, let's put it that way. Although the NPL existed in 17 states and Canada, it began in North Dakota with a man named Arthur C. Townley, a farmer from Beach in 1915. He gave speeches that transfixed thousands of people. Within a couple of years, they had a quarter million members. This book lists law after law adopted in the 1919 legislative session, a time where both the legislature and the governor's office were controlled by the MPL. Among an extensive list of reforms was born a state-run grain mill and elevator, the bank, the ability to recall state politicians, and they developed a commissioner of immigration with a vision of North Dakota as a welcoming place that helps farmers and the working class. The uh, newspapers, the editorials were very harsh on the nonpartisan leg and called them uh, Bolsheviks or socialists. The NPL fought back to its own newspaper called The Leader, The Nonpartisan Leader. But the NPL never ran on its own party ticket. In the early years, candidates ran as Republican nominees. Because they knew that most of the people in the state voted Republican. And so I believe that it was a very conscious decision on their part so they could get more of their people elected if they ran as Republican NPL. Then came insurgency. It started after the 1947 legislative session. The Republican Party decided to go after the Farmers Union. Between the Farmers Union, the Nonpartisan League, and the Democratic Party, an alliance was struck to try to work on merging the Nonpartisan League with the Democratic Party. My grandfather was one of those insurgents. Susan Weefald tells me Old Guard members of the MPL joined the Republican Organizing Committee creating the North Dakota Republican Party as we know it today. Mark Haugen says it took about eight years for the Dem MPL merger to take hold. He considers this a big part of his grandfather, Donnell Haugen's legacy. I asked Vogel if the MPL existed all these days outside of the Democratic Party. I think less and less so. We didn't think ourselves so much as NPLers and Democrats. We thought of ourselves as Dem NPLers, probably because of my grandfather put so much work into creating this merger. Politics were much different back then. Yes, they were, they were rough, they were tough, but there was respect. There was respect that we seem to, seem to have lost in today's politics. There's a lot that the Nonpartisan League brought forth that still makes North Dakota unique today. Lauren and Nicholas, the state bank is probably the best example of this, being able to distribute coronavirus relief faster than any other bank in the country. Yeah, Renee, thanks for that story.